Hey guys, today I want to show you how you can create your own interactive worksheet using any PDF or document that you have on your computer. Um, a side note, I have recently posted a video that shows you how you can use your phone, specifically your iPhone or your iPad, as a scanner which in the video I talk about how I would use this in the classroom as well regarding on the go if I want to scan any worksheets, any pictures, projects on there as well. So if you're interested, I'll link that, link that right below. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our Google Slides and we want to click on a blank. From here, we want to set it up because worksheets usually um, have a different format, so it's not horizontal. So we're going to go to our file and we're going to go to our page setup. And then we don't want the white screen. We actually want to customize it. So regular printer paper is 8.5 by 11. So we're going to type that right in here and then we're going to click apply. So here you can already see that it's already changed the format. You can delete these if you want, um, or you can kind of work on them, but I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and choose what PDF we want or what document we want to turn into an interactive worksheet. And I have different options here that I'm going to show you how I use them in the classroom. I teach Spanish, so this will be in Spanish, but you will get the gist from it. Okay. So first thing is I want to go ahead and make this 50% so I can see and view the whole worksheet. Um, from here, you could save this if you want as a PDF. You can um, download it as a PDF if you like. And I'll show you why I give you that option. It's not necessary, but you can download it um, on there as a PDF. Next thing, so I'm going to click it on here. And I want to view the whole image again. And the reason why I want to see the whole worksheet is because I'm going to screenshot this. Okay. So you can look up how to screenshot in different options, whatever computer you have. I have um, Windows and I'm using that. So I'm going to use my Windows icon and Shift and then S for screen. And it's going to give me this option. So you can see this arrow that I'm going to select. And I'm going to select this worksheet on here. So it'll pop up and it'll give me an option. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. I like that. So I'm going to save it. And as you can see on here, I already have it saved. So normally I would change the name and then save it. So time purposes, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to cancel that. And the reason why we want to screenshot is because when we're using Google Slides, no way of incorporating or inserting a PDF right on there. You, in order to do this and have the interactive worksheet with Google Slides, you need to use an image. So it changes the format. And you're going to see on there how that's going to be added. Okay, from here, we're going to insert our image and create our worksheet. So there's two ways that you can do this. And we can go to our view and our master. So our master would be on here. We have different layouts. You can actually on here add a different um, image. You can do whatever. But the reason you do this is so that when you make your worksheet interactive, the background does not move. So that is one option that you can play with. The next option is the way that I use it here for this worksheet is we're going to add a background. So my background is going to be that image, that PDF or the image that I created. So that's going to be this one. I click on that. It's going to open and it's going to automatically set it as the background which is awesome, it's what I need. It does not move around, okay? So when kids are playing around with this, they can't move it. Next is I wanna make a instruction box, the one here. And I'm just gonna put instructions and I'm gonna write, use the shapes to drag and drop on the pro create words. 
Okay, so then I'm going to have them box yellow. Um, let's say I want to box um, nouns. Circle blue. All forms of goose star. I'm going to write the verb, gustar. Okay, so clearly I can add more. You can add more on here, but I'm just going to leave those two. So next, since I put a box in a circle, I need to insert these movable objects so they can go ahead and circle and box what I asked them to. So up here I have some room. You can clearly do it wherever you like. And I'm going to create my box so they can actually drag and drop on in on the words. So here, actually, this is looks small. I'm going to go on here and I'm going to make it bigger so it makes it a little easier on me and my eyes. Okay, so as we can see here, the box is gray. And if we do this, well, you can't really see the words, right? So we want to make, go on here to the fill color, and we want to make that transparent. So when you make that transparent, you can actually outline it with, um, as you can see the words on there. If not, it'll be pointless and we don't want to do that. So next thing is I'm going to make a yellow since I said box in yellow, all the nouns. So here's my box and it's yellow. Um, I'm going to add and make it, make my line on the box bigger so it's easier to see. So I can make it thicker if I want and I'm going to make it, there we go. Okay. So let's say the kids are boxing this word in, um, then there you go. It's easier to see. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, since for this purpose, there's a lot of different nouns, I'm going to right click this box and I'm going to copy and then right on top, I'm going to click paste. So as you can see, it's going to give me another one. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right over that one. So it looks like I only have one, but when I keep doing that, oopsie, if I keep doing paste, then I do another paste and I put it over. Okay, it's gonna give, it's gonna layer it. So there's gonna be different boxes on there. So the kids can drag and drop on here and say, okay, here's a noun, great. Then here's a, I don't know, where's a different noun? Um, there we go, it's another noun right there. Okay, so they can move around. And I mean, based on the worksheet, you can add as many of these on top of each other as you like, as much as you need. So the next one, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna circle, okay? Cause I asked them to circle the verb gustar. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna do my shape. And I want to do my circle so it can be an actual oval. And I'm going to draw that. Same thing. We want to make sure that we click on fill the color because we want it. We don't want it to be filled. We want it to be transparent. And then I want it to be blue. And then I want it to be thicker. So there we go. Okay. Okay. So this is one way that you can make a worksheet interactive by using the drag and drop. Okay. Now the next thing that you can do is I'm going to go on here I can add another page and since I already changed the format it's going to give me a clean um, 8.5 by 11 format which is great okay so we're done with this one so here's another way that you can turn a uh, PDF that you already have or documents into a interactive worksheet okay so like I said if it's a PDF, we're not going to be able to share that. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm already going to screenshot this. And I'm going to screenshot this part. Yes, it's what I want. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to put P worksheet. And I'm going to save that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slides. And once again, I want to add the background choose the image and I'm going to use my worksheet okay so I'm going to delete these I don't need them I don't need that box there should be another one in here somewhere there we go delete that one 
Okay, so here we go. Now I want to make this smaller so I can actually see the whole page and kind of work with that. So here you can tell we can move around anything. That's our background. And I want to insert a text box so the kiddos can actually type in there when I share that with them. So I'm going to click on the text box and then I'm going to click on there and then maybe I want to say type here. Okay, so that's a little vague, but maybe I can make it bigger and then maybe I make this font a little smaller and there we go. So type here. Um, you can go ahead and do everything on here. So the same because you want them to type in there. So I'm going to save my time here and I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click and copy and it should give me a box already. So I'm going to drag that here type here, paste again, move them wherever you want them to type, okay? Um, same thing here, I'm gonna click, right click, I'm gonna click paste, and I'm gonna move it all the way down, and I'm gonna make this bigger because, there we go, okay. So you will do that for every other one that you want for them to write in, even if you, um, I mean, you can even do it if you want them to write their name or whatever, but okay. So that's another worksheet. So we have this one where we just, it's a uh, drag and drop. And then we have this one, which is a fill in a text here. Okay. So another cool one that I want to share with you guys is you can actually use this for them to create projects. Here's a template that I have for them to create a project. So once again, I can do the copy and has an image copy that it's going to give me the same option and then i can go ahead and just save it as well and do the same thing add another one add it as a background here and then i can actually have them turn in a project that way okay another thing that you can do is you can actually um i have here normally in the classroom I have hard copies of um, packets of notes that I like the kids. So we go through the unit and fill it in. You can actually make an interactive notebook and I will make a video in the days to come and post that so you guys can see how you can actually make your own, but you can also make these. So let's say I wanna make this one into a interactive um, note taking guide then I will do the same step, take a picture, save it, and then add it as another one on here. Make sure that you have it as a background so the kiddos are not able to move things around. Okay, the next thing that I wanna show you is that once you save this, so let's say I wanna do PE demo, and PE is just the unit, what it's called for me, for the Spanish book that we use. So I have the demo on there, and I can actually copy the link, or let's say I want to share this on my Google Classroom. So I have here a Google Classroom that I've made um, as a demo. So I have, let's say, I have Spanish 1. Here I can go ahead and I can click this and I can share it just as you would. Really what I wanna do is I wanna copy the link, okay? So I'm gonna copy the link, and you can post this on your Google Slides, on your Google Classroom, whatever, Schoology even, whatever page you have to share with your students. So then what I'm gonna go here is share something with your class. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click paste. And here's what I wanna do. As a little tip, this back part, edit and sharing, I wanna delete that and I wanna type copy okay and then i'm going to post the reason why we want to do copy is so that when the kiddos click on that link it automatically allows them to click and make a copy okay you don't want them to be able to edit because if you have 100 kiddos they're all going to be editing the same thing you don't want to do that and also you don't want them to 100 students request access to your page on there okay that would be a lot of emails, so we don't want that. Okay, so once we have our link, 
I'm going to click on that link. And as you can see, this is what the kiddos will say. It's like, hey, do I want to make a copy? Yes. It allows them to make that copy for themselves. And then each student will have a copy. They can save it under their name and then share it with you, which through whichever means you have them turn in assignments remotely online. Okay, guys, I hope that this was helpful and that you are able to use this in the classroom. And leave any questions below, and I will answer them as best as I can. And I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.